Hello everyone, <clears throat> this is the second take of this video. I attempted to make it quickly and I I made a mess out of it. So, whoops, no, that's not a good sign. I didn't have, I didn't really have anything specific to talk about, but I got a couple of requests from from friends to uh, to make another uh, another vlog. So uh, first of all, uh, yesterday I received uh, two nice pieces of hardware. The first one is a cartridge for uh, MSX systems that allows you to load software for. From uh, uh, micro SD and uh, regular SD cards, it supposedly works with every version of MSX hardware. And um, I needed one of those because I don't have. Uh, uh, I have a couple of systems that I showed you previously, and. Um, I also have uh, another addition that's not uh, in front of me at this uh, time, an MSX2 machine that unfortunately has a bad floppy drive so I can't, I cannot uh, load software. Um, uh, the second uh, interface is a similar one but this is for, uh, for the Spectrum. Uh, it takes uh, SD cards here and uh, it also has a, a joystick interface so um, and I also have uh, I bought the latest Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate which I got for 15 bucks, 15 euros, so that was nice. Um, I haven't played much recently due to work. Um, my Let's Play series of Assassin's Creed Unity is uh, about to be completed. I have uh, seven uh, episodes left to upload. And unfortunately, um, a few days ago, my internet service provided uh, downgraded me actually because of the of the long of the long distance between me and the uh, the, the Islam the uh, you know <coughs> the network uh, hub five kilometers away from my location so uh, the connection is uh, is terrible it barely meets the minimum for um, an ADSL uh, connection we are, we are talking really really uh, uh, low speeds I just uh, measured it with this uh, this speed test and it's uh, just the the upload speed is now only half uh, megabit per second it's just 500 uh, it's no actually it's lower than 500 uh, megabits per second so it takes me about two hours or two hours and a half to upload a few minutes of uh, 720p footage from a from a game capture session, so it doesn't look it doesn't look good, and that's the way I'm uh, I cannot upload regularly now. Um, 
the other thing um, I had to cope with is uh, a minor, um, you know, uh, a minor problem. I wouldn't say it's anything uh, uh, big, but it's a, a little upsetting. I mean. Uh, someone who doesn't have a, um, doesn't know how to do this he will uh, uh, he will just um, he, will, he, will, he will not even notice it I mean it's about uh, the Windows 10 updates automated updates and uh, the latest version of uh, NVIDIA, um, what is called G NVIDIA Gaming Experience. Uh, yeah, the G NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Um, Windows 10 downloaded by itself without any notification. Uh, the um, anniversary edition of Windows 10, which um, disabled all the settings I had previously done and uh, it silently installed a bunch of uh, worthless applications and uh, games that I never use like Candy Crush Saga and the, uh, some uh, Zynga games that I casual games that I never want to play and I never want them to be installed on my PC and um, Nvidia downloaded by itself and updated a GeForce experience to version 3 which requires requires you requires that you log in in order to use the shadow play function and uh, um, capture a video game footage so you have to take some steps in order to disable uh, automated updates. It's not that simple because even if you you you, you can't uh, reverse the uh, don't have a, an option to reverse the previous uh, version. Uh, first, you have to disable several uh, um, running uh, services on uh, your computer and uh, disable some um, services and uh, programs that are executed uh, on the boot sequence and after that you have to make uh, some registry modifications in order to, exp to exclude any f possibility for future automated updates so someone who doesn't have uh, the slightest idea how to do these things he doesn't stand a chance his computer is monitored there is a telemetry function in both windows uh, 10 from microsoft and nvidia drivers to monitor your actions what uh, programs you use um, uh, what updates you uh, in your steam library um, the computer usage in general uh, it's uh, having uh, they are they snoop they are snooping programs in essence they are sort of surveillance programs and that is unacceptable for me and I have no I, I, I don't care about uh, Microsoft's uh, um, what what's it called um, the marketplace all these uh, useless uh, applications um, I don't care about this so uh, another um, another thing that I'd like to mention is that I watched um, Dean Thompson's uh, playing with uh, his uh, PlayStation 4 Pro and being utterly amazed by the um, by the quality of uh, graphics in Uncharted 4 and um, he was kind enough to uh, show the people uh, the 
specific um, adjustments uh, to get the the perfect uh, the perfect uh, possible quality from his um, very competent uh, um, 4K uh, TV and also he he gave me the um, uh, the specific uh, model of his uh, television which is actually was a uh, it's a it's a uh, last year's uh, last year model. Uh, I did a very quick um, research and I discovered that um, a smaller uh, panel, a 49 inch panel with uh, the technical specifications of uh, Dean's television is uh, uh, doesn't cost much more than a uh, thousand euros. Um, so I found out that there are, um, besides the 4K resolution, there are, um, uh, there's a bunch of other, uh, very critical specifications that you have to, um, take into consideration if you want to, to buy, a, um, a good um, a good 4k TV uh, first of all you have to buy one that uh, supports uh, uh, HDR it has to be a 10 a native 10 bit uh, panel um, and if possible you have to find um, uh, the, um, the lag time of the, of the display. Ideally, the lag time should be um, under uh, 20 milliseconds. Otherwise, um, the panel itself will uh, introduce uh, delays uh, into your gameplay, uh, which is uh, very bad, especially for Twitch shooters and uh, fast-paced action games. So. Um, I found a, um, a model that uh, closely matches um, Dean's uh, television. It's uh, the Samsung KS7000. Uh, uh, 49UE 49-7000 model. Um, which costs approximately 1200 euros and um, hopefully in the following weeks um, thanks to the, the Christmas period it will be even um, uh, thankfully I will be able to find it uh, even uh, cheaper there is a slight possibility that I will be able to, to afford one uh, one such uh, television, which is uh, at this particular moment, the my PC is um, is barely able to. I think theoretically is barely able to um, to achieve a sustainable and. Uh, fast frame uh, 4K gaming, uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, what else? Uh, yes, I've been um, I've been thinking about um, a specific um, issue: the the correlation between. Um, um, the function of the human brain and um, and the gaming um, uh, for the past um, for the past couple of years or so, I've been having uh, some. Um, I, I've noticed that my dreams have become um, a little more clearer. Not exactly lucid, I wouldn't use the term lucid, 
uh, because uh, the term lucid, dr lucid dreaming and lucid dreams um, is a very specific uh, characterization, a very specific uh, category of, uh, of dreams. Uh, but um, I've noticed that um, after the death of my father, um, I've confronted uh, new realities, new the the, um, the concepts of uh, pain, of uh, loss, of um, death and despair have become more um, um, more tangible, more uh, apparent in my life and I've been uh, I've, ha I've been having thoughts about the, the meaning and the consequences of uh, the loss of uh, close and uh, loved ones and um, what is the, the meaning and what is the um, um, how can I um, overcome these fears and uh, come to terms with uh, the idea of our mortality and so I've been having these violent dreams uh, dreams of uh, uh, of um, physical pain and um, and um, really horrible of uh, physical trauma and uh, body mutilations and the fighting um, uh, being confronted with um, um, uh, violent uh, creatures and uh, other individuals who want to, to hurt me. Um, it's just to, uh, like uh, reenacting uh, violent scenes from uh, from uh, video games. And um, if you ask me a few years ago, I would I would never have these dreams. Um, and the thing is, not only um, do I feel uh, pain and uh, fear, I it's like I'm I'm getting into the dream, wanting to get into conflict wanting to be injured and uh, uh, physically mutilated I let the it's like I want to feel the um, the experience of of, uh, of pain and um, so I thought it was that uh, this was bizarre oh yes and one other thing I have uh, I've had some dreams. And it was very strange. Um, I had the dreams uh, looking at myself from a third person perspective. And um, uh, these dreams uh, coincided with my, you know, my violent dreams. So it was like uh, having dreams, my, my dreams were turning into a third person perspective. Uh, <laughs> shoot them up or. Uh, hack and slash uh, game um, so I, I did a brief research and I um, I found this uh, article this um, this uh, psychological study conducted by a Canadian uh, university um, they surveyed uh, 125 gamers and non-gamers on the frequency with uh, which they experienced uh, lucid dreams and um, they actually noticed some of the things that I experienced like uh, able, being able to toggle between 
first and third person point of view inside the dream or having uh, or, or navigating uh, threats and confronting really hostile and uh, frightening uh, situations involving um, fatal injuries and uh, really catastrophic um, conflicts and that was uh, <clears throat> and it wasn't something horrifying it was something um, liberating it was as if my brain was trying to explore the possibility of personal uh, of, of, of my personal death of my personal um, um, destruction and it tried to rationalize that and uh, to act it out to see what how would I feel of course I felt I didn't feel um, um, I didn't panic it was just I was uh, observing what was happening to myself as if I were the avatar of a game that I play every day on my computer so I do believe that games alter your perception the way you uh, the way you dream uh, not only visually but thematically too they help you navigate uh, difficult uh, uh, concepts they help you they help you um, um, cope with uh, these uh, existential problems and so um, yeah uh, what else uh, there was a, a small uh, retro exhibition That was uh, it was not something special. It was not. Uh, uh, it's nothing like uh, you know the big uh, you know expos and uh, events uh, that you have in uh, the UK or uh, United States. It was just uh, you know a small area with uh, a few dozen systems. Uh, uh, I didn't shoot any video, um, but I I will include the link uh, of some footage uh, taken for from a for a, from a friend from a friend's uh, YouTube channel here in Greece. Um, and from what I saw, it was. <laughs> It was a very, you know, it was interesting. It has a couple. It had a couple of, uh, you know, of uh, main uh, arcade cabinets, some uh, eight-bit and sixteen-bit uh, systems, a couple of uh, DOS and Windows PCs, and uh, <laughs> I'm happy to report that. Uh, I have most of the systems displayed there. I have, um, you know, uh, I have some Amstrad uh, 8-bit systems, Sinclair, Commodore, Amigas. Uh, I also have a couple of Atari STs now. Um, a couple of Accord machines. No, several. Uh, in fact. Uh, the BBC Model B, the Acorn Master, uh, the the Electron, and even the Atom. Uh, I'm expecting the Electron and the Atom. Um, unfortunately, most of them are uh, not in good condition. I got them very cheap, and some of them are just for parts. They need uh, replacement. Um, they, they don't even have uh, cables, so I have to work considerably to to make them, uh, uh, 
you know to make them operational so um, and I also have found uh, some uh, some uh, pretty rare uh, systems um, from a couple of friends that uh, just wanted to get rid of them um, unfortunately uh, they are uh, in bad condition too and I have to restore them as well um, and uh, I'll be I'll be getting those systems uh, Possibly before Christmas because uh, these guys uh, they are friends uh, who who moved uh, away from Athens due to economical reasons due to family reasons and so, so on because they, they, they changed works they, for, from for, for all sorts of uh, reasons so um, Possibly I will be uh, able to have uh, quite a lot of uh, retro systems soon. Now I think I have about about uh, 15 um, retro computers, and I think it will be maybe maybe it will, it will be very soon. It will be double. Um, I will be getting some old uh, Macintosh machines from the 80s and 90s. Uh, I'm negotiating them now as uh, as we speak uh, with guys from uh, here. I got some uh, some of them from eBay, uh, namely the the Accord machines and. Um, some uh, Amstrad PCs. I got an Amstrad PPC 640, which is the, the portable version, uh, essentially the portable version of my first computer, the PC 1512, which is very hard to find in good condition and uh, a whole unit because the, the 1512 was um, a peculiar uh, machine. It uh, the the power supply was uh, in the inside the monitor and it powered the, the main unit so uh, you have to have such a machine such a monitor to power the main unit and it's uh, very hard to find uh, um, a PC1512 or a 1640 in good condition on eBay, and uh, the, they are very, they are quite heavy, and uh, the the postage uh, prices are very high. So I don't know. I would like to have one, but we'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to have. Uh, I'm hoping to have more uh, retro systems. And uh, I'm starting to have like like I show you the, uh, the devices to be able to to actually use them uh, because I don't have uh, access to, to to software. I cannot afford uh, buying original uh, games for uh, for retro systems, so I have to resort to. Uh, you know, um, SD card emulators, and, uh, floppy emulators, and uh, disk drive emulator. So yeah, I guess uh, that was uh, that was all that I had to say. That I wanted to say, and um, there are a couple of other issues that. Um, 
involve gaming um, and uh, but they are um, somewhat um, controversial and uh, hard to approach um, because they involve um, socio-political uh, views and I don't want to delve in, the, in, this, uh, in this particular sphere because unavoidably it will upset some people and I don't want to do that um, <clears throat> I don't know, perhaps I will uh, as I said before in a previous video, maybe uh, the solution will be to, to start a new separate channel regarding these matters and uh, in this channel uh, I will uh, talk strictly about uh, games and tech. Um, And yeah, and also I, I've been seeing these videos by this guy. Um, this guy is um, a technician that uh, who lives in Manhattan and um, specializes in um, repairing uh, laptops, laptops, MacBooks, Apple, uh, Apple, uh, Apple laptops. And he actually streams the process of um, uh, repairing a motherboard. He has a, a high-powered uh, electronic microscope, so you can uh, witness uh, everything that he does. And it's very revealing. Um, what he does is very revealing because it um, exposes this new. Um, uh, this new approach that companies, that especially Apple has taken uh, with uh, miniaturizing uh, the components and actually leaving uh, absolutely no, no room for uh, user uh, interference. Even the, the SSD disk is now glued onto the motherboard. You cannot I don't th even think that you can uh, upgrade uh, the RAM capacity, the memory capacity. You just buy a machine as is. You you cannot uh, alter. You can make any alterations. Uh, and the other thing is that they 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 have taken a. a a different path when it comes to connectivity and upgradability they now have only I think they have two or four um, they have some uh, the new kind of USB C type uh, connectors which means you need um, several special dongles converters to in order to um, be able to to use uh, different kinds of, kinds of um, of peripherals and even simple tasks like uh, popping in your SD card is now uh, <laughs> impossible without uh, getting a dongle. The previous uh, MacBook uh, Pros at least had a, an SD card slot and that is absent for the from the new generation of uh, machines um, so um, this whole um, um, this whole approach of um, It's not really empowering, and when it uh, it's not empowering, I don't think it's empowering the user. It doesn't give you options, especially when you are a professional user. You want to customize your machine, you, even if it is a laptop. Um, 
I mean not being able to upgrade the, the memory not being able to swap the the storage uh, the, the, the SSD drive, the hard drive um, not only to upgrade but to but be in, in, uh, in case of a um, of a failure of hardware failure to be able to to extract the data to take the, the hard drive off the laptop and put it in a in an external case so that you can transfer your data um, to another computer you, you you cannot do that which is very unfortunate now uh, there is a tendency to drive you for the companies to drive you to the cloud to drive you even um, for uh, for companies of uh, big organizations you have to migrate your um, on-site uh, infrastructure and to make it uh, uh, a hybrid uh, situation uh, half on uh, site half on cloud have hybrid uh, um, infrastructure they push this thing and there are only a few players left who can uh, globally support uh, large-scale uh, infrastructures I think it's uh, one is Amazon one it's uh, Microsoft with Azure Another one, it's I think it's EMC now, which uh, uh, they are being taken over by um, uh, by Dell. It's now Dell EMC, Dell Technologies. And I think there is a fourth one. I I don't remember. I'm not sure. But the point is, they drive you to the cloud, not only for uh, for your personal data. Um, they want access to your data, they want access to everything and now they give you free, they give Windows 10, they give you Windows 10 for free and it's actually snooping, snooping software, it's snooping everything you do it's a surveillance, surveillance mechanism um, I don't think many people are aware of that. Um, even I wasn't aware of. Uh, I think uh, there was this piece of legislation passed a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, it is called Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act. Uh, it's federal law in the United States which supposedly improves cybersecurity through enhanced sharing of information about cybersecurity threats and for other purposes and um, uh, there are similar laws, laws um, enacted in uh, different countries in the European Union as well um, essentially these laws uh, are um, uh, are put in place in order to supposedly um, stop cyber attacks and cyber threats by all they do is um, dismantle the, the, mechanics and the mechanisms that are um, there to protect uh, privacy and uh, the integrity of, uh, of the individual's data um, so I'm getting all the more um, day by day I'm getting um, discouraged to 
to share anything about uh, my personal life. To, that's why I'm, I'm uh, a little apprehensive, I'm a little uh, hesitant to use uh, social media so much. And uh, um, a few years ago, um, prior to Edward Snowden and uh, Julian Assange, uh, you 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 couldn't believe that uh, every everyone that was talking about a large scale uh, surveillance um, um, project. Uh, would be characterized as uh, a conspiracy theorist, but uh, when we learned about uh, NSA and CIA's uh, already established programs that span the entire world, well then, it was much bigger and more intricate than we ever imagined, so... Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed by companies that I trusted for many years, like uh, Microsoft. I, th I thought my Microsoft um, would know better than to um, do this thing with Windows 10, which is essentially a, you know, a, a snooping software sucking all your uh, data, all your uh, information because it's free. I wish I had stayed with uh, Windows 7. Um, and unfortunately I don't have the luxury or the time now to um, revert my systems to previous um, versions of Windows or to um, start meddling with Linux because Linux takes time to get acclimatized to and uh, to um, to learn new, new tricks and new uh, patterns of uh, usage uh, so yeah in 10 days it will be December 20, the 21st, the winter solstice, solstice, and it will be the climax of my uh, seasonal depression. I hate winter, I hate cold, I hate small days, and even the thought that uh, the day will be uh, <laughs> the smaller day, the smallest day of the year, it's, uh, it's depressing. A lot of people have seasonal seasonal depression, and uh, I just hate to stay inside and not be able to uh, to do whatever I wanted to go about around, around and about freely because of the cold, because of the of the small days and long nights. Um, anyway. Um, We'll see how it goes, and uh, I hope I will have uh, new and exciting retro systems to show you. I'm, I haven't uh, forgotten about my promise to make a special um, presentation of a couple of Commodore machines that I've always wanted to have, and now they are in my possession. But I want to to have a, a nice setup for this machines uh, now right now it's a mess here I'm constantly bringing uh, work from the office and uh, I don't have time to uh, uh, to uh, to make a, a clean um, setting for uh, for for displaying for showing these machines but uh, maybe I'll do a Christmas special, we'll see. So, this is... Uh, oh, God, 45 minutes. Well, I think I'll uh, 
I'll uh, cut this video here and uh, God knows how long it will take me to upload it with my new and uh, even crappier uh, internet connection. So, uh, until next time, uh, take care and uh, stay out of harm's way.